Thanks for watching. Today we're gonna make gluten-free pasta. It's so simple how you make it. And here is my guest, Jill. Thank you for joining me, Jill. Oh, my pleasure. So you won't believe how easy this is to make. Have you ever made pasta before? Never made pasta. So it's so easy. I'm gonna do it old school. We're not even gonna use a bowl to mix it up. You can, you can use a bowl if you want, but I'm just gonna pour it right onto my countertop, just like that. I need a pinch of salt. And we're just gonna lightly mix it up. So far, so good. Yeah. Easy. Okay, now I make a little bit of a well. And you can use use your fingers to make the well, because really you're gonna be getting your hands really dirty anyway. And we're gonna crack an egg. Just like that. And I forgot a fork. And then we're just gonna lightly whisk that fork. Sorry, that egg, not the fork. We're not whisking yeah, the fork. Okay. And we slowly put in a little bit of flour every so often until it starts to combine. And really, nothing tastes better than homemade pasta. I mean, the store-bought stuff is good, don't get me wrong, it's, and it's really convenient. But when you taste what real homemade pasta is like, you're gonna be baffled. At, and, and we're just seeing how easy it is. And, and using the gluten-free is works just as well as works regular flour? wonderfully, yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's all I need that fork for. This is also a really fun recipe for kids that like to be hands-on. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> Maybe not too young, because you don't want to get the flour everywhere, but... So, I'm just doing, like, tablespoon by tablespoon, and I'm just going to mix it up. It's going to get a little sticky. Now, is your water at room temperature? Or? Yeah, it's just yeah. room temperature okay. water. It can be ice cold, just don't do hot, okay. hot, hot. Okay. You don't want to cook that egg. Oh, right, yeah. So you can see it's 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 really nicely, the egg is really nicely mixed. Now we just need to make it wet enough to start forming it into a ball. And a little bit more. And I guess the more you do it, the you get used to the feel. Yeah, yeah. The nice thing about gluten-free baking and, and with pasta is it won't get tough. Like with regular gluten pasta, if you knead it and knead it and knead it and yeah. knead it and knead it, it, it needs a certain amount of kneading, but after a while, it just gets tougher and tougher and tougher, like pastry. If you right. overwork yes. put pastry, oh, yeah. Yeah. it gets really gross. Whereas this, there's no gluten to, to inhibit, inhibit okay. that. Okay, I understand, yeah. Do you need a scraper, Joel? Yeah. Oh, you got one? Okay. Let's scrape that off my fingers first. There we go. And you can see, I mean, it doesn't make a lot, but it's it's a, it's a, like a... Yeah, but that's perfect for what, two, three people? Yeah, well, exactly. I would maybe double this for my family, because okay. well, my boy eats a lot. Okay, well, you've got growing kids, right? So... But you can see, I mean, if you feel that, you can see just, it's, it's starting to... to yeah. To, yes. to get really nice. Yeah. Now it is stiffer than like a cookie dough or anything, but... Yeah. Okay, so... Now at this point, you can run it through your pasta maker. If you have one. If you have one. I do, but I'm not going to run it through my pasta maker because... I'm going to roll it out. Okay. So lots of flour, just to keep it going, because it's a little bit sticky for right now. And I'm just going to constantly move it around. And then I get my small rolling pin. Do you want water out of the way? I just have to... Sure. Thank you. And look at that. And you can make it as thin or as thick as you want. Obviously, the thicker it is, the longer it'll take to cook. Let's get that little lump off so I don't... Look at that. That's beautiful looking pastry. Yeah. Well, pastry, but it's pasta. Pasta. I'm just watching the snow all pour off the roof. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that looks gorgeous. Let's do it. One more pass. There we go. So, 
You can cut it with a knife if you want. Uh, let's do it smaller than that. And you can just go individually. But However I'm, thick. Wow. I have one of these fun little devices. It it adjusts to whatever size I want. So if I want to do lasagna noodles, I can I can pre-cut oh, okay. my lasagna noodles. It's great for scoring cookies and things like that. But I'm just going to do... I'm going to do short little noodles. So we're just going to go like that. And it's okay if it picks them up because... You're going to be picking them up anyway, and it's all right if they crumble or, or break. But you can see just how nice they look. Yeah. And so fast. And it's so fast. I mean, that took, what, two minutes? Yeah. Like it doesn't, it doesn't take much. So now we just sort of... And I'm just going to lightly flour it just so that it doesn't stick anymore. And so we're going to set that aside. Now, do you have to dry it at all? Or? Nope. Oh. Nope, that's it. So I'm going to let it sit just for a minute and while I make the sauce, and then I'm going to put everything into a pot, and we're going we're gonna to cook it all up. Okay. So just like magic, we're on to step, step two. We're going to make the sauce. Um, we're going to put some olive oil in. E-V-O-O, extra virgin? Absolutely. Okay. Only the best. I've never worked with this machine before, so I don't know if it's going to work or not. Okay, so I've got some um, ground turkey here. Now that heats up really quick. And I'm not going to add salt just yet, because I want to get a good browning on the, right. on the meat. It draws all the moisture out, doesn't That's it? That's right. And then it'll just take even longer. So if I just spread it out... Okay, so that's almost there. So while that's cooking, I'm going to add my onions and my now, garlic. Do you have a reason you use the red as opposed to a white or just I what just like you the had flavor. in the house? Yeah, okay. I just like the flavor. It was what was on t what was local. Okay. Um, I like shopping local, so mm -hmm. um, and I go with after local, it's I go with what's cheapest. Okay. So the red onions were on sale and they were from Ontario, so that works. Yeah. So at this point, I'm going to add a bit of salt and some pepper. <laughs> pepper mill? <laughs> Fresh oh, ground. Yeah. Okay, and while that's doing that, oh, what did I just do? I just shut I it off. It off. I think it's because I turned, I moved it. Yeah. There. I'm just going to slice this up. That's just some basil. Or basil, depending. Yeah, depending on what part of the world you're from. There, I'll just put that in there. And he obviously has very sharp knives. Now, do you um, do you add herbs to this, or just just the fresh? So, garlic? basil is is like a primary herb that I like to right. add. There is garlic in there. But I've made um, a homemade tomato sauce, oh. and I'll link the description of how to make it. Okay. Um, it's really easy, and I've got onions and garlic and thyme and. Oh, so all your flavoring is in the sauce. Yeah, and I, I bought. Sorry, I didn't buy. I um. I used all fresh herbs from my garden when they were, when they were in right. season. So I know I'm gonna get really good. Oh, smells delicious. <laughs> it smells so fresh. Oh, and it is. It's so. Fresh. Let those onions cook down a little bit more. So they're not so crunchy. Yeah. I find I can't ever get enough basil, and that's why I like just putting extra basil in. I have some on my windowsill in my kitchen, but it doesn't get a lot of light, so the leaves are only about this long. <laughs> the flavor is there, but it's different. I remember at the restaurant, I. Uh, we brought in a case of corn corn shoots, or corn sprouts. Yeah. And they were just these little green things that looked like bean sprouts, and you bit into them, and it was like you're eating a whole stalk of corn. It was. Wow. It was like, oh my goodness, there's so much flavor in there. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the basil in, and I'm gonna put tomato sauce in. I don't know if I'll use all of it. I might just use most of it. I can always add. It's harder to take it out. I'm going to let that cook down for a few minutes. 
got all the flavors to work together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the pasta is, the sauce is done. We've got the noodles, they've, they've rested for a bit, and you can see they're, they're, there's some that are a little bit small, and that's, that's exactly what you want, because I find when I'm making like spaghetti or something yeah. like that, I'm breaking it up anyway. Right. So I'm just gonna lightly pour, put these in here. They don't take long at all, like less than a minute. And wow. it's because they're already hydrated, so you're not having to rehydrate them. It's just really cooking the egg, I guess. That's that's all it's doing. And I'm, I'm not just throwing it in the big clump because I don't want them all to stick together. Right. So once that comes to a boil again, I'm, I'm going to say it's done. But the, the trick is not to overcook your pasta, the fresh pasta, because it'll become mushy. Oh, okay. So there, there's a, there is a fine line between cooking it too much and not cooking it enough. We used to throw ours against the wall, and if it stuck, then you knew it was cooked. Ah, uh, but that's gluten-containing pasta. Oh, 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 so it won't Gluten-free pasta, you would just get a bit of a mess. If I put the sauce on top, I let my guests and toss the people consuming it, it toss it themselves so they can decide how much and how little to, to really enjoy. And there you have it. I mean, maybe 10 minutes yeah. and you know exactly what's going into it. It's so nice and easy. Yeah, it is. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you, Jill, for oh, coming you. and joining me. Most welcome. Looking forward to my lunch.